this video, I'll be introducing the three families of rodents that we'll be talking about this week. And if you can't see the notes on the board clearly, don't worry, we'll, we will post all these notes online. So, this week, all of the rodents that we're looking at are sciuromorphic. And as I mentioned in the PowerPoint video, we group rodents into broad categories based on their skulls, especially the zygomatic. So, for a sciuromorphic species, we have this zygomatic plate here where the jaw muscles attach. This is different than the species we'll look at in the next two weeks. So all of the ones right here have this plate. The first family we have, family Castoridae, is this one, the beaver. This is the largest rodent skull we have. I should first of all say that you can tell it's a rodent skull because it has these two big incisors and a diastema and then the cheek teeth. This is different than rabbits and pikas, which we'll look at later, which have two pairs of incisors. They have a second pair hidden behind the first. But these rodents, just two basic pairs. Okay, so we figured out it's a rodent. This is the largest rodent we have. You probably won't get it confused with anything else except maybe a porcupine, but as we'll see with the porcupine, those are pretty unique. So, big skull, greatest length, 115 to 160. Cyamorphic, different than the porcupine. This is our beaver. You should also know the beaver's skin. Um, I'm not gonna show you a picture of that. You can look at the picture posted online, but you probably know what a beaver looks like. All right, so that was family Castoridae, Castor canadensis, our North American beaver. Second family, Geomyidae. These are pocket gophers. We only have one species in Montana. Actually, that's not true. We have two species. The second is really rare, the Idaho pocket gopher. So we're just going to focus on Thomomys palpoides. So that's the one that we have to learn for this class. Now this, you can see, and if not, then you can check the photos, is cyromorphic. So you can see that plate right there, like the beaver, like the squirrels that we're going to see. However, and unlike the squirrels, there is no post-orbital process. So let me hold up this little red squirrel for comparison. And you can see my finger brushing against that pointy bit, bit pointing backwards. That is a post-orbital process, meaning a bit of bone sticking out behind the eye. We will be talking about post-orbital processes a lot. This one doesn't have one. Also, the teeth of the mummies topoides are different than a lot of the other rodents. They are prismatic, which means that they have an outline of enamel, but then they're flat across the top. So, if you can see this, you may be able to see a little outline around each tooth. Each tooth is kind of a simple little circle. If you look from the side, they're completely flat across the top. So they have that outline of enamel, unlike, say, our teeth or all the squirrel teeth, which have enamel kind of all over them. This is the only um, species with prismatic teeth this week, but we will add more in future weeks, so something to keep in mind. The last thing about the skull is that this right here is kind of really strongly angled. So you can see, compared to the squirrel that kind of slopes off to the side, this is just really, really strong. Big snout sticking out and then boom, off to the side. So that is something that just kind of generally looking at this from the top down, you should think, hey, that looks like a pocket gopher. And the last family we have, Sayuridae, Sayuromorphic, and as I mentioned, has a prominent 
post-orbital process. Now here's a marmot, the largest um, squirrels that we have in Montana are marmots. So looking at the front, you can see this flat plate there, cyuromorphic. And from the top, you see these enormous post-orbital processes. Now even on smaller species, like this red squirrel, you can still see that post-orbital process. You can see this post-orbital process on every squirrel. So if it has the flat plate and the post-orbital process, it's a squirrel, family Cyuridae. For the Lomis talpoides, the pocket gopher, for identifying the skin, one of the most useful things to know is that it has cheek pouches. Here, the cheek pouches are kind of closed, but you can see the line where it sticks food. These are external cheek pouches, so just outside there's a flap of skin that it can hide things in. And it has these feet with big claws. Other than that, you won't get it confused with the, say, um, kangaroo rats or other things that have cheek pouches.